Hey guys, and welcome to episode 11 of my HTML tutorial series for Knowledge Highway. Uh, today, we're gonna be doing a little... This is probably gonna be quite a small episode, but I kinda wanna keep meta tags to its own episode, so today we're just gonna be going over um, doing embedded style sheets, uh, styles embedded in tags, we're going to do some script stuff, and that's that's about it. So it should be fairly short. Let's get that standard template right in there straight away before I talk any further about all this shenanigans that we're going to be learning today. Um, this stuff, again, is going to be kind of difficult to understand for teaching someone that does not know about JavaScript or uh, CSS, so don't worry if you don't understand this. I will be going over this again in both my CSS tutorial series and, if I do it, a JavaScript tutorial series as well. So, uh, oh, I'm gonna add in a heading el head element as well as a body element, just because uh, we're at the stage now where we're using both the head and the body fairly consistently. Uh, let's just do a brief overview. Head, again, is the element where you put all the stuff that describes your web page, and the body is where all the content goes, all the stuff that the user will see. So, back on track. Let's go. So, let's get a couple of things in here. Let's make heading one. This is a title. Oh, heading one. And let's make a paragraph element. Let's paragraph element and call it what will we write here? This is a paragraph of text for all of you to read. Don't know why I feel the urge to type in real long sentences in here, but that's fine. So let's save it and let's check it out. Did I prepare my web page? I did indeed. It's still got last time's episode in it though. So there we go. I've refreshed and we have what we have done so far. This is fairly expected for this point in time. We've done this a good few times. So let's learn about the style tag. And the style tag usually goes in the head element and we're so we're gonna just throw it down here this is one of those tags that you will open and then close so let's make an opening tag let's make a style tag close so in our style element in fact let's first add an attribute to the first style tag so within this first style tag let's type type that was kind of confusing so key in the word type, there, that makes more sense, um, as their attribute, and equals open quotation mark, and the value we're gonna set this to is text slash CSS, close quotation. Now this is just telling the browser, hey, we're wanting to use CSS here in within this uh, style tag, within this element. Uh, so, Anything that goes inside this style element now is CSS code. So you would only put CSS in here. Um, so let's go ahead and put some in. Now again, I'm not going to go over what this does so much because that is for my CSS tutorial series. So let's just type out something like setting header one to um, size, oops, font size let's say 72 pixels let's make it color uh, I think you can just type in words green um, that's gonna do for that and then let's make a separate one for P again don't worry you don't even have to type this out this is just for demonstration state sake so you can see it's actually doing stuff and we'll type in red okay so I've saved that and now let's try it out. Let's see if all this CSS has in fact applied itself to our body. Boom! It has. It has indeed. So, now you can see this is basically what I called an embedded CSS, or style sheet, sorry. This is an embedded style sheet right here within the style element. So, this is all good and well and good, but 
what if you're feeling super lazy and you just want to write the style out in the individual tags and you want to be a messy programmer? Well, you can be. I don't recommend doing this, but let's show you anyway. So I'm going to get rid of the style that we already have just so I can reset everything to default. So save it. Yep, it's all back to black and white and boring. So let's go into our heading one tag. And now let's add an attribute called style. That's not how you spell style. There we go. Um, and let's set, let's type equals and then open quotation. And this is now where we can also type some CSS code into. So I'm going to set this color to um, purple. Let's see if they have that one. I assume they do. Um, and then semicolon. This is the way that you write CSS. You add semicolons. Um, between lines and then let's add something like padding equals 100 pixels this is probably gonna look kind of stupid but there you go let's go close that save it and i'm also gonna add a style attribute to our paragraph element in the first style tag type style equals quotation mark and i'm gonna set this color to blue and then i am that's that's gonna do it for the P tag. So save that. Let's see if it worked. Uh, yay! It all worked. This has a ridiculous amount of padding now, so the tile title is just kind of floating in the air. Man, I hope you saw earlier on when I demonstrated, because I keep forgetting I'm only capturing this region of the screen. Uh, so yeah. Uh, if I if you couldn't see it last time I brought up this web page, it was indeed working uh, for. For your informations. So, we have embedded style sheets and style embedded in our tags as well. All this exciting stuff, uh, and that's pretty much the end of styles for now. We'll go over more when we get to style sheets. So, let's get rid of all this style nonsense, get it back to the good old fashioned, yes, formal and black and white and perfect. Not really, it's kind of boring. So, Let's talk about adding JavaScript. So, I'm going to make a very small little JavaScript file. Again, this is the same thing as when I wrote the CSS one out. You don't need to know about this. So don't worry if you don't understand what's going on. Uh, this is just me demonstrating stuff. So, I'm going to type out an alert. This is a message box. Oh my goodness. Uh, written in JavaScript. And we will save this file out. Save as java.js. So Java files are saved as .js, but you don't need to know that right now because we're only talking about HTML, so ignore that. Um, so yeah, let's, let's go and try and include this java.js in our index. Now, how would you go about doing that? Well, you might think that you're just wanting to use the link tag, but that does not in fact work. For, for any kind of client-side script, uh, script being a bunch of instructions for the computer to follow or the browser to follow, um, to execute any of those or run them, uh, we're going to have to use the script tag. Pretty, pretty nice naming system there. All makes sense. So let's open... Uh, tag and type in script and I'm just gonna close it for now. Um, this is one of those tags that you really should close so let's slash script or the other side to close the element. Now within the first script tag we're gonna type in the attribute type. So type that out Haha, -ha, that was a funny joke. Anyway, uh, and for that, we're going to set the type attribute to text slash JavaScript. This is basically just telling the browser that what we're about to open is JavaScript and tells the browser, yes, please read this as JavaScript. So let's go ahead and tell the browser where to look. So type out SRC, standing for source. And we're going to set the source attribute equal to the name of our JavaScript document. So I called mine java.js, if you remember. And I do. So let's save it and see if anything happens. 
Go, 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 web page. Boom. This is a message box written in JavaScript. Yes, indeed it is. So checking my JavaScript box. Yes, indeed, that is what I wrote before. And now I need to find my browser again. There we go. Click OK, and there we go. So we've included JavaScript. But one more thing. What if you want to write your JavaScript directly into your HTML document? Well, you can do that, my friend. We can make that happen. So, uh, really, it's not much difference from different from this. The only thing that's different is we remove the source uh, tag uh, attribute from our script tag. So basically, it's just this. So within your script element, you can go ahead now and write whatever JavaScript out that you please. So I'm just going to write the same thing again. Uh, alert JavaScript rockin yo world sun sun spelt like that because I'm gangster and stuff. Bet you have never heard of someone less gangster than me. Anyway, save that and let's test it. Boom, it works. JavaScript rockin' yo world son. As it as it says. So now you can go ahead and include all those JavaScript files that you haven't written yet. Or maybe you have. Maybe you're an expert in JavaScript and you're just looking for a way to include it in your HTML. Who knows? Okay, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Next time, we should finally get to meta tags. Uh, <laughs> this one is a bit of a pain because it's something that I've never gone over in depth. I know what it's used for and I know what I use it for, but apparently there's a whole lot more to the meta tag than meets the eye. So I'm going to give that a careful study before I try and unleash my knowledge upon you for next time. So see you guys then. Goodbye.